where life is just a song. In the heart of the Rockies, where each day is tailor-made, and each trouble seems to fade, yes, each trouble seems to fade away. Whistling a tune, a happy kind of tune. In the heart of the Rockies, Never worry, never mind, cause we left our cares behind, yes, we left our cares behind to stay. Tramp, tramp, tramping up a mountain trail, blue, blue skies of blue above. Sing, sing, singing through each hill and dale, cause we're singing of the land we love. Easy to see that life is heavenly. In the heart of the Rockies And we'll watch the world go by Far away up in the sky Cause away up in the sky we'll be It's the heart of the Rockies For me Don't come any closer Hold it Here comes the highway engineer Warden, you better hold the boys here. We're going to blast in a few minutes. Everything's all clear for you. That's good, because she's all fired up. The fuse has about two more minutes to go. Are we safe here, Roy? Sure. Giving the officer signal. All right. Stampede them up the canyon! Ha! A bunch of cattle came through here just as that first blast went off. Several of them got buried under this landslide. This one has a W bar W brand on it. W bar W. The Willard cattle. This may mean trouble, Roy. Well, I sent a notice to him we were doing some blasting over here and to keep his cattle away from the road. Willard's an eccentric. He's been fighting against a highway going through his ranch for 20 years. He's crazy enough to complain to the prison board about this. Well, why? If anyone's to blame, I am. I have nothing to do with the prison board. Well, I'll ride over and have a talk with him and see if we can't reach some sort of an understanding. You better keep us out of it, Roy. We can't afford to make enemies. We'd all be in the pen if it wasn't for this camp. It's not just for us. Warden Parker says if we make good, there'll be other camps started. Don't worry. I won't do anything to get you in wrong.
<laughs> there she is, rope tied and branded. I thought I had that critter broken. I'm June Willie. How do you do? I'm Roy Rogers. <laughs> and you're around here, aren't you? No, I'm the state engineer on the highway. Had my uncle been around, those might have been your last words. Come on. Oh, wait a minute. Where are we going? To your horse. Oh, but I came here to see Mr. Willard. Oh, I get it. You're going to convince them that the new highway will benefit all the ranchers. What's wrong with that? Not a thing, except you're having a chance. Oh, but I have to see him. You see, we accidentally killed some of his cattle. In that case, I'd advise you to get on your horse and ride like the wind. And don't stop until your horse drops. Then write him a letter about it. You know, I don't believe a relative of yours could be quite that tough. Oh, don't you? Nope. All right. But remember, you asked for it. <laughs> Uncle Andy. Yeah? You've got a visitor. Who is it? Uncle Andy, I'd like to introduce Roy Rogers. Yeah. I know who he is. <laughs> if I'd answered the door when you arrived, you never got in here. Now, get going. I came to report an accident. Ten or twelve of your cattle were buried in a landslide while we were blasting. That's going to cost the state something. Mr. Willard, the future of a lot of boys depends on the success of that road camp. We'll do everything possible to get along with you. Like blowing up my cattle? If you'll fix the price on the ones that were killed, I'll settle for them myself rather than have any trouble. My complaint is against the state, and that's where I'll make it. <laughs> a dozen of my cattle will cost you a year's salary. I run nothing but the finest purebred stock. I hope we could reach some sort of an understanding. So let's start by being honest. Are you calling me a liar? Why, you... Uncle Andy! Now, take it easy, Mr. Willard. Press young squirt. What do you mean, talking to me of honesty? Just this. I'm talking about your prize-winning stock. Well, they're nothing but a bunch of scrubs. Is he giving you trouble, Mr. Willard? Yes. Take this powder monkey off the ranch. Uncle Andy, making trouble for those boys won't stop the road. Your niece is right. That new road will shorten the state highway by at least 50 miles. And no individual's gonna stand in the way of that kind of improvement. I can. Now get out of here. Come on, Rogers. All right, Devery. Back that remark I made about no relative of yours could be quite so tough. You should all be awfully proud of yourselves. Now get back to work. Go on. You did. What I admire about you is your code to give everybody a fair break. You may be my uncle's right arm. To me, you're nothing but a hoodlum on horseback. If you ever pull anything like this again, the ranch won't be big enough for both of us. Well, Derry, what's, uh, what's on your mind? 
You know, it'll take some time before the state acts on your petition. By the time they get around to it, the road will be half built. Then they'll figure they may as well go through with it. They can't build across land they don't own. But they've condemned the land and paid you for it. Whether you do or don't cash the check won't mean a thing. But I've got an idea how you can stop work on the road. How? An epidemic of crime. We could fence in 50 acres down at Indian Springs and plant cantaloupes. Melons make a good cash crop. Why, blast you, Derry. I'm a cattle man, not a dirt farmer. What's the matter, Uncle Andy? Nothing much. Derry wants me to get down on my knees and grub for weeds. It was <laughs> just an idea. I didn't know you had enough brains to get an idea. What you need, Uncle Andy, is a new manager. What do you want, honey? The cook wants to know if you'd like apple pie for dessert. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> Or you could have some cantaloupe. Well, I'm going to give you a good paddling. You attend to managing the cattle, Devery, and don't come to me with any more truck garden ideas. With a few more crimes around here, the prison board will have to shut down that camp. I'm not going to be a party to a robbery and possibly murder, if that's what you mean. The sheriff doesn't believe in molly coddling prisoners. He'd back us to the hill. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't. He'd delay the road, give you time. They'd have to get bigger appropriations for civilian labor. It might take him a year to get them. For the last time, Devery, I'll not consent to robbery and violence. You old hypocrite, you consented to crime 10 years ago when you talked me into breaking into the county office and doctoring the land records on that 5,000 acres you stole. I didn't steal it, Devery. It should have been mine from the first. I only want to help you, Andy. As long as that track is an island in the middle of your ranch, you're OK. But once the road opens the land up, a lot of people are going to be interested in it. My work on those records won't stand a close investigation. That'd mean we both go to prison. I won't, but I know you will. All right. What do you want to do? Not a thing. Splinter's cook learned his profession in the state pen. The handyman was his cellmate. I planted them with splinters this spring because I figured they might be needed. How you feel, Roy? Feel fine, Splinter. Say, that's pretty music those silver dollars make. I ain't heard none prettier. <laughs> Ouch! What's the matter? Oh, my lucky pieces make holes in the pocket. <laughs> splinters! Oh, splinters! Yes, Miss Edsel. Coming, Miss Edsel. Now, the old professor's going to give you your fourth and last lesson today. And this is guaranteed to make you a real Western. <laughs> Oh, now, Mrs. Edsel, you ain't an Indian. I told you in your first lesson you always get on the left side. The left side's the right side. Don't you know that? The right side's the wrong side. Now, you just get your leg open. Why, splinters. Now, take a deep seat. Why not, Fanny? Come on, now, spur him. Spur him. That's it, Mrs. Edsel. You do it great. <laughs> well, this looks like as good a time as any. Yeah. As long as you hear music, you'll know the coast is clear. Sorry, madam. Don't call me madam. Yes, miss. <laughs> I love the prairie country. I like the western sky. Give me a faithful pony. I'll be riding high. Western sky, you and I riding high. Riding high. I love the open spaces. Give me the morning sun. I like the rope and riding till the day is done. Morning sun, having fun. Day is done. Day is done. Free. And easy, that's a life for me. Free and easy, that's how I want to be. I love the prairie country, I like western sky. Give me my faithful pony, we'll be riding high. Western sky, you and I riding high. Riding high. Vida libre, can pari goza. Vida libre, 
Así es el bienestar. I love the prairie country, I like a western sky. Me and my faithful pony will be riding high. Western sky, you and I riding high. Morning sun, day is done. I love the prairie country. Well, you'd think those guys were guests around this place. Why don't you bring your dudes over to the road camp this afternoon? We're going to blow up half the mountain. Oh, I'd like to, Roy, but I can't. You see, Willard gave me an invitation to come over to his place. Most of the ranchers in the district are going to be there, and he's going to make a big speech against you building that road. So now you're going over to his side, huh? Well, I've got no choice. An invitation from Willard's a command. But don't you know that he owns all this land? Over 20,000 acres of it. All I do is rent this little place. Mr. Flinders, something terrible's happened. My diamond pin gone, stolen from my dresser drawer. Well, are you sure you didn't lose it? <gasps> of course I'm sure. I put it in that drawer last night. Well, do something about it, can't you? It's those convicts in the road gang. I saw one of them prowling around here early this morning. I'm going to get the sheriff. Oh, now, Mrs. Edstall, let's... Well, I hope she finds that pin or there's going to be plenty of trouble. Look what's cooking. I put near got caught. I thought you'd stop playing. I couldn't stop playing. How'd I know he's going to pick the tune up? Ah, uh -huh. Keep your fingers out of my stew. How are you getting along, boys? Well, Warden. Fine, Mr. Parker. Hello, Sheriff. Have you brought a visitor to see the camp? I have not. I want you to line up your prisoners. Mrs. Edsel had a diamond pin stolen. I certainly did. Oh, I can't believe any of these boys would steal. They've stolen before. Call them together and let Mrs. Edsel pick out the thief. I'd know him anywhere. I saw him prowling around my cabin. Come over here, boys. Come on, line up. Come on, you fellas. Let's get with it. Mr. Parker's talking to you. Well? The man, the one with the brown shirt and the funny little hat. Step over here, Crawley. The rest of you boys go back to work. This boy wasn't prowling around Splinter's Ranch. I sent him over there with a message for Rogers. All oh, right, come over here, will you? Sure enough, Warden. What's the trouble, Warden? The accused of stealing a diamond pin from Mrs. Essel's cabin. Roy. Where were you when Corley delivered my message this morning? We were in a bunkhouse getting dressed. It was quite early. Did you go out with him or see him go from your window? Well, no, I didn't. I'd never been over there before, and I did have a little trouble finding the bunkhouse. I guess I walked around a couple of cabins, but I didn't go inside any of them, and I didn't steal anything. I believe you, son. Just why did they send you to this road camp? Go ahead and tell him, Jim. For stealing. I'm going to have to lock you up. Wait a minute, Sheriff. You have no proof that he stole anything. Well, of course he hasn't. If he was around Mrs. Edsel's cabin, so were a lot of others. He'll get a trial, and it'll go much easier with him if he hands over the pin and makes a confession. Ah! Wait a minute, Jim! Stop, Corley! I don't want to go to jail for something I didn't do. Oh, you're so strong. Thank you. 
mean you're not hurt? Of course not. Say, that ride took 20 years off my age and 20 pounds off my... <laughs> what did you mean by shooting at that nice young man and trying to frighten him? Well, I was afraid you'd be killed. Don't forget, you identified that nice young man a few minutes ago as a thief. Well, he's not guilty. He told me so himself, and I believe him. Well, I know he wouldn't steal. But running away like that sure gives Mr. Willard a lot of ammunition for that meeting this afternoon. I've got just about enough time to get you to the dude ranch and get to that meeting. Let it out, Roy! Get out. <laughs> the state says they're putting the road through to help us. They say it's to help get our stock to market. Oh, yes. Do we ever have any trouble shipping our cattle in the past? I'm not thinking of only the big ranches. We can stand it. But if that... If that road is built, it's going to mean ruin. Yes, ruin to all the small cattlemen of the county. They're all falling in line with him, Gordon. When he gets through, you better get up there and straighten them out. Maybe you're right, Andy. But what can we do about it? The state condemned a right away across your land, and they paid for it. The state never paid for it. I haven't cashed that check, and I don't intend to. I've blocked the building of that road for 20 years, and I'll keep on doing it. You're a big man, Willard, but not big enough to fight the whole state. And I'd like to know what makes you think you're right. Maybe that road will be a good thing for us. The highway will bring in a lot of small farmers. Not if you don't sell our land. <laughs> You'll sell, all right. We'll all sell. Once the road is in, they'll raise our taxes until we have to sell. How can we stop them from building the road, Andy? I'll tell you how you can stop them. You can sign this petition to the governor that'll be handed around at the end of the meeting. <laughs> and by signing this petition, we'll also get rid of that road camp of young criminals. And shut it down immediately. They belong in the penitentiary. I agree with Mr. Willard in one thing. If our road camp is closed down, those boys will go to the penitentiary. I served as warden of your state penitentiary for 30 years. I know what prison does to youth. Released after serving their first sentences, they found that the stigma of prison made them outcasts. Their only friends were hardened older criminals. Soon they came back to the penitentiary as second offenders, then as third offenders. Hardened criminals now doomed to a life of crime. The purpose of the road camp is to give young first offenders a chance to repay society and to save them from the association to prison and to teach them the habits of industry and self-discipline. And now one of my boys stands accused of crime. I believe he is innocent. And why did he run away? Because he was frightened. And under the circumstances, who wouldn't be? I ask you to give the road camp a fair trial. Even if one of these boys has made a second slip, is that reason enough to condemn all the others to prison? Think before you sign a petition to close the camp. That's a lot of poppycock. The fact remains that they're criminals, still running loose in this law-abiding community. Sheriff, as our leading citizen, I think you should be the first to sign. I'd be happy to, Andy, and I hope the rest of you do the same. You can count me in, Sheriff. Me too. And me. I have a sign, Splinter. Oh, well, I'm going to, Mr. Willard, but, you know, I broke my wrist. Very <laughs> funny. Wait till your rent comes due. Oh, it feels better already. <laughs> Just a minute, Roy. I think you made a lot of friends, Warden. This is one petition I won't sign. Thanks, Miss Willard. But I'm afraid I didn't change your uncle's opinion. And he carries a lot of weight in this community. Maybe June can help. I can try. June! Glad, June. Please don't go through with this, Uncle Andy. I'm going to fight that road with every weapon that comes into my hands. I don't care who gets hurt. That camp will be stopped and so will the road. I want to talk to you, Andy. Later, I haven't got time now. I'll be waiting for you in the barn. All right. Gonna cease my wonder. 
Just wondering if each fallen star could mean a fallen tear. Cause it looks like I'm never gonna cease my wondering. Wondering, wondering. Long for a place I could call all my own. Long for a place that would be mine alone. Long for a place that I never have known Somewhere neath the western sky I guess I'll keep on moving on And head for some place new Collect my pay and spend it What's a cowboy gonna do? Cause it looks like I'm never gonna see my wonder wondering wondering Yeah, and he knows we work for Splinters. Well, good night, fellas. Oh, oh, right. oh, almost forgot. I'm asking you over the rodeo tomorrow. I'm putting on a shindig for my guests. I want you to feel free. I mean, uh, I want you to come and go as you like. I, I mean, the warden will bring you over, and I sure will like to have you. That's full of his brain. Great, let this will be that. At least nobody was hurt. Roy, it's Warden Parker. What? It's no use, Roy. Boy, you and the boys take the warden's body back to camp. All right, Roy. You're the powder expert. What do you make of this? Well, the door must have been open at the time of the explosion. Otherwise, it would have blown this hasp clear off of here. Hey, this lock's been twisted. Twisted clear off of there. Maybe this wasn't an accident. Al, stick around. Don't let anybody touch anything. I'll be back with the sheriff in a little while. All right. The first man I ever knew was killed tonight. We're gonna stand for that. Not if I can help it. He was one of the finest friends any of us ever had. The sheriff will probably blame us for his killing. Yeah, he'll probably say we sneaked away from the campfire and stole some powder. Either us or Corley. I'm all for getting the guy that killed the warden. Willard. Yeah, maybe he wasn't there himself, but he's behind it. He's been fighting this road from the start. And now he's got a petition to have the camp closed. We'll go with the pin. 
So what do you say, fellas? Shall we go pay Willard a visit? him for the death of Warden Parker. Accidentally killed. Accidentally? Yeah, accidental. Get out of here. What about this dynamite? Use it like I told you. Now get going. If anything goes wrong, keep your mouth shut, and I'll get Willard to get you out of this. Now stay here and let me do the talking. I want to talk to you, Mr. Willard. The warden Parker was killed tonight, and it wasn't an accident. That's none of my business. That's for the sheriff. Go see him. Now clear out of here. We're going to get this thing straightened out, and you'll talk to us. They just want to talk to you. Yeah, but we don't want to talk to them. Roy. We're going to see if Willard knows anything about what happened tonight. Get out of the way, Rogers, unless you want to get shot. These fellows are trespassing, and we have a right to shoot them down. Go ahead, Debbie. Wait a minute, Debbie. Put your gun away. These boys aren't even armed. Now, you listen to me and do as you like. You boys are doing this to show your respect and devotion to Warden Parker. You think he'd be proud of you now? Well, maybe not. But we're going to find out what that old goat knows. No old goat? Somebody's going to pay for the warden's murder. Well, I feel the same way about it. But it has to be done lawfully. Yeah, if we leave it to the law, Roy, we'll be the ones to pay. Yeah. What kind of a break did they give Corley? Uh, right, right, right. You're going to spoil everything the warden ever lived for. The whole country will be saying he's just a sentimental old fool with an impractical idea that wouldn't work. Now, if you want to do something for him, you'll go back to camp quietly and act as if he's right there with you till the state can send somebody here to replace him. He'd like that better than the monument. I'll go on back to camp. Sure, Roy. Come away from him, June. You'd better go, Roy, before somebody does get hurt. I want you to know I'm sorry about this, and I'll do everything I can to calm him down. Get going. Good night, June. Good night. Good night. Best break we've had yet. I'm going to see the sheriff in the morning. By the way, who did kill Parker? The deaf. about convicts on the loose, about the sheriff. He didn't eat a thing. I think he went into town. Is Devery around? I haven't seen him since breakfast. 
pie. Hey! stays in this country. I was just barring it, honest. Listen, Miss Willard, before you take me to the sheriff, I'd like to talk to Rogers. And that's why you stole the horse? I can guess why he tried to steal the pie. Is it safe to put this rifle away? Sure. All right, come on. Where is it, the rodeo? Splinters. Oh, you recognize me, huh? Well, get in there and have a big time. This is the greatest show in town. Go on, get in the mood. Get on up there. Everything's on the house. Boys behaving themselves? You bet. Well, after what's happened, I'm afraid they wouldn't be able to make it. This afternoon's entertainment should take their mind off their troubles. Thanks a lot, Miss Vessel. I'll think nothing of it. I'm real Western. Yeah, you sure are. <laughs> you better not come in with me. You might have an accident. Somebody might not understand. All right, Miss Ward. I'll send him out to you. Say you never saw a dancing crowd so gay. Say you never heard the fiddle really play Till you come and pay a visit out our way At the rodeo square dance Say you never thought that there could be such fun Nothing else is like it underneath the sun You were gonna have a treat before you're done At the rodeo square dance All the ladies in their Sunday best Tap their feet in rhythm And the men folks like you might have guessed, soon we'll join in with them. Now we're getting set to have the dance begin. Gotta have a caller. That's where I come in. You will see some strutting like there's never been at the rodeo square dance. At the rodeo square dance. All you square dancers, grab your horses and take a deep seat. Oh! 
an order from the state prison board to take over these boys? I am responsible for maintaining law and order in the county. These two men are special deputies. And I'm taking charge until arrangements can be made to send these boys to prison. Why? There was a bank holdup in town last night. And the sack that held the dynamite was marked State Highway Department. Bank robbery. If there was any dynamite stolen from us, it must have been done by the same person who killed Warden Parker. But that doesn't prove these boys had anything to do with it. What about the threat to Willard at the ranch last night? All right, guards, march them back to camp and put them to work. Your vacation's over. If anyone breaks out of line, shoot them down. That's what we get for listening to you, Rogers. Let's go. Come home right away, June. All right, Uncle Andy. <laughs> Looks like the road camp is going to shut down, Rogers. <laughs> I wouldn't bet on that. Uh, get out. I'm glad now I didn't get a chance to tell you this sooner. I found Jim Corley. Where is he? He's waiting in the old mine shaft, at the edge of the ranch. He's coming in to give himself up, but he wanted to see you first. Thanks. He hasn't got a horse. Okay. Searching for you, Jim. Yeah, I know. You're in trouble. The boys are in trouble, too. But I want you to turn yourself over to the sheriff. In the long run, you'll be helping yourself and your pals. I realize that now. You can do a lot of thinking on an empty stomach. What is it you wanted to talk to me about? I want to show you something, Roy. Come with me, I'll tell you about it. Sure. Hiding out up here. We're on Willer's property. Yeah, and there's something funny going on. All right, let's get the other bunch. Once a day ever since I've been hiding. I don't get it. 
I know what they're doing. Those cattle there unloading their scraps. But when that truck pulls out, it'll be loaded with village purebreds. What a double cross Devery's given Willard. Yeah. Looks like the old man was on the level when he told me he had nothing but purebred stock. That's the last load for today. Let's get those scrubs in with the rest of the cattle. I guess it's time for us to get out of here. Corley? Yes, and a lot of other things. Where's your uncle? He isn't here. Well, you better invite me in because I'm going to stick around and wait for him. You're all right. I don't know where he was. I'm worried. He hadn't been on a horse in five years until today. He went out in the range. He wouldn't let me go with him and wouldn't tell me where he was going. Maybe he rode out to look over his stock. I don't know why he'd do that. Say, how many scrub cattle do you have on your range? Why, none. And maybe you'll be surprised to hear that Devery was shipping out purebreds this afternoon in exchange for scrubs. And my guess is he's been pulling that trick for a long time. That's hard to believe. If it's true, this will kill Uncle Andy. Hello, June. Is your uncle around? No. I made a good deal today on 30 Head. A rancher in Arizona has turned into purebred stock. I had to take 30 scrubs in on the deal, but uh, we'll fatten them up and get more than I allowed for them. I knew there must have been some explanation. It's just a fast alibi. He's been rustling your cattle. That's funny. 
I seen him and a pal out on the range. I thought they were rustling the way they rode when I threw a few shots over their heads. You'll find the details to the deal I made on Mr. Willard's desk. Will she find the check on his desk, too? Not for a few days. They were shipped COD. Go to the office and bring me the papers covering the deal. I'll believe it when I see them. I sure will. You needn't trouble, Devery. Rogers is right. What Rogers said about scrub cattle with my brand stuck a McCraw. Coming back from the road camp today, I saw a few of them. I guess they wandered down this way through a broken fence. I decided to forget my arthritis and take a look at my stock. It's time for a showdown then, I guess. I paid you big money for running the ranch. I trusted you against June's advice. I never let her interfere with your management. What'd you do with my cattle? I've been stocking a ranch in Arizona. I knew as soon as this road went through, this whole thing would blow up in our faces. Do you want me to shove off for Arizona now, or do you want me to stick around till you can hire a new crew? You aren't going to Arizona. You're going to jail. You and your old gang. Fine. We could be cellmates. What did you mean, Uncle Andy? I'll tell you what I mean. Shut up, Demery!
Where's everybody? He must be in the mess hall. It's behind the haystack. Send some of the boys around the other side. Sure, Dad. Wait a minute. Make for the house. Dudes amused, don't you, Splinters? <laughs> Those guns aren't loaded, are they? <laughs> oh. What's the matter? Oh, that hole in my pocket. Ah. I'll keep this dough from falling in your boot. Oh, but <laughs> they're my lucky pieces. And this is my lucky day. Now get on that horse. Ow. Come on, hurry it up. <laughs> Devery will keep his word. There's a chance he will. Sure. I've got an idea. If you'll let me use the boys from the prison camp. Are you sure they can be trusted? I'm positive they can. Go ahead. Thanks. Look after Corley, will you? Sure. You certainly will. dynamite and everything that goes with it. Hurry. All right. Come on, fellas. Boys, I'm going to need four volunteers, and it's going to be rough. You four, come on. We'll be out of sight. Sure thing, Roy. We'll put the charge on this side of the tree. That'll make it fall across the road.
was hit me. Oh, he did. Oh. 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 Darn, I hope of my pocket. <laughs> I hit the jackpot. Right, Devery. You're going to jail. Not just for rustling cattle, but for murder. Come on, get up. Well, you're home, son. Thanks, Sheriff. Boys, I've just received a wire from the governor of the state. The road camp is to continue as it did under Warden Parker. They've asked me to be your new warden. I'm wiring my acceptance immediately. Gee, Gee that's one. Well, did I teach her that? Charles Bennett? Fuller didn't teach you that. Sure. Say, finding my diamond pin on that crook sure saved the day, eh, Splinters? <laughs> Wired to the governor immediately. You bet I will. 